going to do this video on the Cornish market town of Marazian and its most famous landmark, the Benedictine Abbey in Ireland, St Michael's Mount in its bay. I'm going to give you this video really as a guide to people who want to come and visit this place for themselves because it is such a uh, interesting and popular tourist spot both for British visitors and overseas visitors and having a look on YouTube there's not really that many good videos that uh, act as a guide. We're going to split the video into two halves and the reason for that is still quite early in the day and the tide is still in that means we can't go out to the island oh well we can take a boat, but it's much more fun to walk. So we're going to wait for the tide to go out so we can use the court way. So the first half of the video, we'll be having a tour around Marazian Town. And the second half of the video will be a visit to St Michael's Mount Island Gardens and the Abbey itself. OK then, uh, it's uh, 11 in the morning. Uh, we're going across to St Michael's Mount in about three hours. So let's go for a wander around the town. As we head out, I'm in the Dolan at the moment. I'll explain what the Dolan is in a second. I'm just going to do a bit of uh, quick background history and orientation on the map so you know where we are in the world. And then we'll get back to a bit of first person view. Let's go and find out what we can explore and find in Marazian and St Michael's Mount. Let's go. OK then, a bit of orientation. On the map, we're in the southwest coast of Cornwall, about 50 miles east from Land's End, and about two miles east of the town of Penzance. Marizian is quite a small town with around 1,400 residents. It's an ancient market town which is over 800 years old and was granted a charter of incorporation by Queen Elizabeth I in 1595. The strange name comes from a mistranslation between the Cornish language and Old English. The town's name developed from the Cornish for Thursday Market and forgive my Cornish pronunciation here, Margaris Yol meaning Thursday market. Yol became mispronounced by native English speakers to Jew, the town then being nicknamed Market Jew, which at some point became Margaris Zion, or Marisian, as it is today. The town has no actual connection with Judaism. As you can see from a more detailed map, Marazian is about a mile in length and about 500 metres back from the coast. It is dominated by the island of St Michael's Mount in the bay. I think you'll get a better idea if I show you from the air. For my American and other non-British subs and viewers, this will probably be the first time that you'll have encountered or even heard of the Cornish language. And many signs in Marezian are bilingual. But don't panic. Cornish is a heritage and quite a niche language and English is a primary language throughout the town. So no need to purchase a Cornish phrase book. Although you can get a bus to the town from Penzance, most people visit Marezian by car. So I do need to brief you about parking. Parking in the town is strictly residents only and is very ruthlessly policed. As a visitor, you must use the out-of-town visitor's car park, which I'm showing you now. Don't worry, it's very reasonably priced, about £1 an hour, and it's only 10 minutes walk from the town centre. It is APNR policed, so do make sure you pay. The ticket machines, though, take credit cards, which is ideal. And if you've got a camper van, there is this overspill field for camper vans and excess cars. However, if you have mobility problems and you're in possession of a blue disabled motorist badge, there are disabled bays in the short-stay car park close to the town centre. From the car parks, you can either walk into town along the main street or along Marizian's second biggest attraction. It's miles of miles of immaculate sandy beaches which stretch all the way around the bay back to Penzant.
Not unexpectedly for a small town, the town centre is really tiny and it does get packed with tourists in the summer. You can stay here in the Marisian Hotel and there are also numerous bed and breakfasts and Airbnbs to rent, but you'll find most people prefer to stay in the town of Penzance. Despite being small, there's plenty to see and do here and the town is geared towards the tourist trade without being overly commercialised like you'll find Land's End is. I had a few hours to kill in Marisian as the sea tide went out before I could visit St Michael's Mount and I certainly wasn't bored. For food and drink, you have a number of options depending on the time of day you're visiting the town, from restaurants, cafes to pubs and even snack stands. But in a really short video, I don't have time to list them all. But predominantly, in a town centre, you've got a choice of the very stylish and quite expensive Godolphin restaurant, or the King's Arms Public House, which does really nice gastro pub food. But I decided to go up the hill to another pub which was recommended to me. As you can see now the tide is starting to go out and the jetty is starting to emerge from the sea. So I think it's a good time to talk about the passenger ferry boats. Although I'm waiting to go across on foot when the causeway is finally open, you can still visit St Michael's Mount at high tide by taking a passenger ferry. Few points. To go out, you must book online as this service is also subscribed, particularly in the summer and the weekends. A single fare costs £2.50 per person each way and is in addition to your cost of your ticket for St Michael's Mount, which you must have with you to board the ferry. There are three jetties for departure in Marisian, and the use of these depends on the sea state and how high the tide is. When the causeway is open, the boat service is suspended because it's not needed. When I opened the video, I did my intro vlog from this place, a building known as the Dolan, an Art Deco public scenic viewpoint built in 1937 in commemoration of the coronation of King George VI, the present Queen's father. It's built on the high ground overlooking St Michael's Mount. Although refurbished in 1972, it is again in a bit of a state of disrepair and vandalised, which is sad to see in an otherwise pristine town. I do have an ulterior motive for visiting the Dolan, which is to visit this place, the Fire Engine Inn, which is virtually next door. I had my lunch and a beer up here in the Fire Engine Inn. The menu is gourmet and absolutely fantastic. The girl behind the bar was also super friendly and chatty, which is something you don't always find in tourist pubs. And the pub itself had amazing views over St Michael's Mount. In my opinion, this is the best pub in Marisian. And because it's 20 minutes walk from the town centre, it's also much quieter as well. And you're more likely to have a peaceful lunch. But I again would recommend booking in the middle of the tourist season. To illustrate the speed of the tide in the bay, this was the causeway to St Michael's Mount before I went up to the Dolan and the fire engine in to have lunch. And this is the causeway at 2pm or just after, just two hours later. So now I think it's time to walk across the still wet and seaweed strewn causeway across the bay to visit the island of St Michael's Mount while the tide is now out. Let's have a look at where we're going from the air. The walk along the causeway from Marisian to St Michael's Mount is about half a mile and it will take you about 10 to 15 minutes at a quite leisurely pace. At the island end of the causeway 
is a ticketing checkpoint. Which brings me on to my next point. Important point, you must have a ticket to enter the island. Numerous people walk the causeway only to be sent back to Marisium because they haven't got tickets. St Michael's Mount is really popular, particularly in the height of the tourist season, and can get very busy. And because of that, the National Trust, who runs the site, has a timed entry system. So you will need to book online in advance to guarantee a ticket. Holidays and weekend tickets can sell out days and weeks in advance. So don't risk it and try and book a ticket on the day, or you may be disappointed. A full ticket... That is a ticket for the castle and the gardens. You have the option to drop the gardens element if you want. Costs for an adult £24 or $30. US For a child aged 5 to 17, it's £13 or $16. Under 5-year-old children are free. Big point here, you are not permitted to bring dogs onto the island, excepting assistance dogs. For the second part of our video, we're going to explore the island and the castle. So to illustrate the route I'm going to take on the air photograph, if you look at the bottom right hand corner, we're presently on the causeway about to make landfall. We're then going to walk through the village itself and the port stroke harbour and then make the steep climb up the pilgrim's steps to the castle, have a look around the castle and then finally we're going to finish up the video in the gardens. Okay, let's hit the island. Well, if you couldn't tell by my heavy breathing in the background, the pilgrim steps are really steep, rugged, and can be really hard work. They're more like a rock scramble than a staircase. And if you have mobility problems, you'll probably have trouble climbing this. It's only about 100 meters before you get to a bit of easier ground on the cobble path. After the pilgrim steps and about two thirds of the way up to the castle on the cobbled path, you'll come across this little bit of local folklore. The giant's heart is a heart-shaped stone set into the cobble path that's been here for centuries. The legend is that it is the petrified heart of a giant who lived on the island in medieval times and terrorised the locals. A quick personal story. The last time I visited St Michael's Mount was 1974, when I was age six. And the tour guide, taking us round the grounds, told us kids that if we put our foot on the giant's heart stone, and clapped our hands tightly on our ears, then we could feel the giant's heart still beating in the stone. Yep, six-year-old me fell for that one hook, line and sinker, and I still remember it to this day. But I still had to have another go to see if it's true 50 years later. After 10, 15 minutes of fairly hard slogging up the hill from the port, you can finally take a breather at this cannon platform and castling. That was a Cornish flag flying there, if you hadn't seen one before. I do recommend a 5-10 minute break up here to enjoy the view and have a drink so you're fresh, ready to start the castle tour proper. The history of St Michael's Mount is really long and covers a number of centuries and I don't have time to do it any justice in such a short video. But originally the site was a Benedictine Abbey. The island was then sold to the St Auburn family in around 1659 and the present day castle dates from the late 15th century with add-ons over the next 200 years. But once inside you'll find it's more Downton Abbey than King Arthur. The reason for this, until quite recently in history it was a St Auburn family home and in the mid 1950s it was gifted to the National Trust to manage on behalf of the country. There are guided tours, but if you go self-guided like I did, then just take a guidebook and take your time. There's absolutely tons to look at up here and a very rich and in-depth history. You can spend ages here. 
You'll also find in each of the main areas there is a National Trust member of staff who will be an expert on the site and be able to answer any questions. The route through the castle is one way, a legacy of the Covid outbreak, but there is nothing to stop you doing more than one circuit. Photography and videoing is permitted, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be seeing this, but no flash photography. Once you arrive at the battlements, the view is absolutely amazing. But it's also very windy all year round, and if you suffer from fear of heights, you might not want to look over the edge. The final part of the tour circuit through the castle takes you to the chapel, which was built in the late 15th century and is extra diocesan and part of the Order of St John. The castellated tower originally was designed to be used as an aid to shipping. To finish up our tour of the island, and indeed this video, I'll come all the way down from the castle via the pilgrim steps to the island's cemetery. And from there, we're now gonna head round and visit the island's gardens. The gardens were designed in 1878 for Sir John Auburn. It is terraced over multiple levels, and it's a bit of a steep climb to get up there, to be honest with you. And you'll find many Mediterranean plants growing. This is possible because the rocks act as a storage heater, absorbing heat from the sun during the day and slowly releasing it back into the soil during the night. So warm weather plants can grow without the need for a greenhouse. Amazing, eh? It does cost extra to visit the gardens and you need to pay for this when you book your original tickets. If you're coming to the island, I think you might as well pay the extra and visit the gardens as well. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to walk around them. Nothing amazing, but at least you can say you've done it. I found it quite interesting.
and to finalise our tour completely, something that's right up my street if you've been watching this channel. A bit of World War II history. The island was defended from the threat of Nazi invasion in 1940-1941 by three Type 24 concrete pillboxes. Now, fortunately, these were never needed, but it is said that Nazi Foreign Minister Joachim von Riventop wanted to live at St Michael's Mount after a successful Nazi invasion and occupation. Well, he never got the chance, did he? It's been a long day. I'm fairly tired. I've just walked back along the causeway. It's 5pm now. The tide is due in at about 6, so the causeway will be closing. I'm not going to hang around for that. I hope you got something out of this video, and I hope you enjoyed some of the sites we've seen today, and that you intend to visit here yourself. Uh, to help you with that, I've included a link to some of the locations I've visited in the descriptions. Not affiliates, I don't get paid anything for you clicking them, it's simply to help you out if you intend to come here and visit yourself. Right then, let's go and look at our next destination, and I think I want to go and have a look at the Eden Project now, since I'm in Cornwall, and that video I'll follow on in a few days.